Good day team. In this video, we're going to be looking at technological advancements in light microscopy. Uh, now, this isn't going to be a, a, a history uh, of this person invented this and this person invented this, but more of an overview of the different advancements that has allowed us to have our current understanding of cells and how cells work and interact with each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the uh, first microscope and how that has changed in modern microscopes. Uh, and then we're going to talk about uh, some of those technologies, including cell preparation and staining techniques, including fluorescent staining. And then we'll look at filters such as phase contrast and dark field. Um, so the first microscope was invented in 1600 by a couple of spectacle makers. Um, and they were the first ones to actually grind down two lenses and put them together at the end of a wooden tube. Uh, and from this advancement and similar advancements around that time, uh, there's a lot of different people that uh, basically made different versions of this microscope and were able to discover things like cells, seeing cells for the first time, seeing single celled organisms for the first time, uh, seeing the nucleus uh, and some of the larger organelles within those cells. Uh, so a couple of uh, advancements in that early stage. Uh, our modern compound microscopes are basically the same thing uh, with a few improvements. So we still have two lenses uh, that are separated. In a lot of microscopes now, uh, those lenses are interchangeable. So we have the rotating nose piece uh, that has a number of different lenses on it for different magnifications. Uh, we also have a, a consistent light. Uh, so because uh, light is the source, in most cases shining through the specimen, uh, having a consistent and clear source of light is really important. So in the first microscopes, uh, they were using uh, ambient light from the sun, for example. Other microscopes used a mirror uh, to shine light up uh, through that specimen. Uh, then we got into sources like candles. And these days we have um, electric lights in most of our uh, microscopes. But I'll talk about um, some of the other light sources a bit later on. Uh, we have more control over the focus, so we're able to actually change the distance uh, between the lenses or change the distance between the microscope and the specimen uh, with a high amount of uh, control, uh, which allows us to focus those specimens really well and the multiple magnifications, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, so a couple of things have led to these better microscopes. Um, one of the big ones is that the lenses that we've got now are much better than the lenses they had in the 17th century. I know it's a bit of a surprise, uh, but we've got both better materials. Uh, so rather than blowing some glass and then grinding that, uh, we've got better techniques. Well, we're still blowing glass, but we've got better techniques at that actually preparing that glass so it's consistent. We've also got better grinding techniques. So using modern machinery, uh, we can get the lens to be very, very smooth and within a very small tolerance of changes in the curvature of that lens. Uh, we also have uh, modern materials that we can coat the lens in that reduces the amount of reflection that happens through those lenses, increasing the amount of refraction uh, and therefore uh, stopping uh, that glare and giving us better acuity. We're also much better at preparing our specimens now. Um, so when we're using a, a compound microscope, as I said, we're usually shining a light source through the specimen. Uh, so the thicker the specimen you have, the more layers of cells that you need to shine that light through. Uh, so we have uh, things now that, uh, or machines now, that are really, really good at giving us really, really small, uh, really, really thin rather, um, sections that we can look through. Uh, one of the pieces of equipment we have now is called a microtome. And in a microtome, what you do is you set your specimen in wax and then you shave it a bit like um, the uh, slicer at the deli. Um, slicing ham, you're shaving your specimen. So you're getting this very, very thin section that then can be put onto your microscope slide. We've also developed some pretty clever staining techniques. Now, most cells are actually clear, um, so that light passes directly through them. Uh, however, what we can do is by using different chemicals and placing that onto our specimens, uh, different parts of the cell will actually take up those different um, 
those different dyes, those different chemicals. And that will actually make it clearer to us when we're looking through the microscope uh, because we're uh, looking at a coloured image uh, or a stained image, uh, giving us a better uh, understanding of those very, very fine structures. One of the stains that we now have is a fluorescent stain. And this is a stain uh, that when using a very special light source, and it's a mercury lamp uh, light source, it actually causes the cells to fluoresce or glow. And on a um, dark background, this gives us some great information about the uh, internal structure of cells. One of the downsides of these staining techniques is that by applying chemicals to particularly biological specimens, uh, you might harm the specimens or change the way in which they interact. Uh, so therefore, uh, something that's really good for us to work out uh, how to see these is called the phase contrast microscope. And this is, uh, uses a special kind of light uh, that are, and a special lens that actually depends on the refraction um, so how uh, the light bends as it goes through uh, different cells and different mediums. Uh, and this means that we get a, an image of a living specimen without the need for it to be stained that is very clear and still has those differences uh, between the different parts of the cells. Another uh, filter that we can use is called the dark field. Um, and what they do with the dark field uh, is it sh once it shines the light through, a filter then takes out all of the white light. Uh, and this leaves just the light uh, that has been changed as it comes through the specimen. Uh, so it's really good uh, for looking at uh, particularly quite clear specimens uh, because it gives us this dark background so we get a, a better idea of what's happening inside the cell. In this video, we've talked about that first microscope developed in the 1600s. Uh, and how it differs to modern compound microscopes. Uh, we've talked about the uh, preparation of specimens being very, very thin. Uh, we've talked about staining techniques using modern dyes to allow us uh, a better idea of the structures inside cells, uh, including fluorescent staining that glows when used with a particular light, uh, and a couple of different filters that can be put in the microscope, including the phase contrast, which is based on refraction and the dark field microscope, uh, which gives us a black background where the cells really pop. Thanks for watching. Peace out.